There's been a growing trend over the past two years of I have no friends videos. I had no friends and I felt completely alone. I'm 32 years old. I might have no friends, like literally <laughs> zero friends. Tonight, I'm extra lonely. It's Saturday at 6 p.m. and I'm sitting alone in my apartment at my desk staring at my computer. Like 99 point... 999% of every other Saturday, because I don't have any friends. And when I say I don't have no friends, I'm not saying like, oh, I choose not to have friends. I've always had trouble keeping friends long term. The second people started doing stuff on the weekends, I was always alone in my dorm room. So I have no support system, no friends, nobody to turn to, nobody to hang around with. And is it entirely that bad to have no friends? No. No. I mean, it's, it gives you time to focus on yourself. But would you need that support? Yeah. But I just didn't have it. I think I was fine for a while there, but at a certain point, you need that connection with other people. This comment that I'm about to read to you is what inspired this whole video today. And before I read you the comment, I am like a little bit, I'm a little bit nervous and a little bit embarrassed to admit this online. Slightly ashamed, but here we are anyway. <laughs> but I received this comment about a month ago. It says, I've told you this before, but I seriously wish I had friends like you because we seem to be going through the same phases around the same time in life. And the, the first comment received 24 likes. And when I tell you, that I got a little bit teary. Like I actually got a little bit emotional reading that comment. And it's because I've never really felt like I fit in. I've never really connected with a lot of people. I don't have a lot of friends. There's been points in my life where I genuinely question if I have any friends. This idea that I kind of was pondering and have been pondering this last month that our, maybe not, I can't speak for you, but collectively, maybe our loneliness is monetizable with the rise of influencer culture and parasocial relationships. So I'm gonna be talking about a lot of topics today under this umbrella, relationships, parasocial relationships, friendships, community, loneliness, um, because this is something that I myself have personally struggled with, which is why I'm really nervous to admit it to you. So monetizable, the definition according to the dictionary means able to be converted into cash with relative ease. And I do think that our emotions, especially our more negative emotions, can be easily manipulated and monetized. I think especially with the rise of technology, with the rise of social media, we are growing ever connected to our devices. And I think that we are living in a loneliness epidemic. I've said this once, I'll say it again, and I think it's just more and more on the rise. I do want to acknowledge that I 100% believe that just like anything, there's light and darkness. Social media is no different. Pertaining to this conversation, the fact that I can have conversations and chat with people from all around the world without leaving my home is an amazing thing. The fact that I've met people from around the world because of social media is an incredible thing. And like I said, pertaining to this actual conversation, you know, when we see people on TikTok, especially opening up about the fact that they don't have friends or they feel like they don't have friends, they feel lonely, they're depressed or, maybe they are craving a relationship, a romantic partner that they don't have or just more connection. Okay, no, but I'm so tired of like not having a person. And I don't mean just like a romantic partner or person. I mean, even like on a friendship level, like the person that you do everything with. When everyone around you is getting married, having babies, um, getting engaged, you know, moving in with partners and stuff, um, it can feel a bit overwhelming. And I'll see posts of like all these amazing girls trips and friends that have grown up and just gotten to do all these incredible things together and that are just there for each other no matter what. And I'm like, why don't I have that? I just, I get really lonely. And... <sighs> when we see things like that and anything that we're experiencing, when we see someone else talking about it, it almost lessens that burden on us because we know we're not alone and it lessens the feeling, the heaviness of that. I do think that's really worth acknowledging. And before we really get into today's video, I am gonna to try to keep it as light as possible. You know, talking about a topic like this can seem quite heavy, but 
I think the beauty of something like this is that there is something that can be done about it. And I'm going to talk more about that. The beauty about life is it's constantly changing. So I like to hold on to that belief. The flip side is that we are exposed to just so much on social media. We're exposed to seeing how the other half live, essentially. We are able to get a glimpse into how other people live. People with seemingly perfect lives, perfect families, perfect relationships, perfect, huge, thriving friendship circles and buzzing um, extravagant social lives and social outing. You know, they have a job that they're obsessed with and they love and that makes them lots of money and all of these things, we see these things and if we don't have any of them, it can actually negatively play on our mind if we're not careful. This comparison trap that I've talked about before it can leave a lot of us feeling like we're left behind or we're not good enough or that our life should be perfect and it's not and there must be something wrong with us. Sometimes it doesn't even necessarily come from the parasocial relationship of an influencer. Sometimes it can come from non-influencers, people that we know know of or are friends with in our real life. I can't be the only one. Let me know, please let me know. <laughs> I can't be the only one who's found themselves, you know, sitting on their couch on a Friday or Saturday night alone, feeling sad. And I open up my social media account and I see people going on date nights or, you know, a friend out and about socializing, getting out, or I see groups of friends, people that I know out and about. And I think, why wasn't I invited? Or maybe they must not want me there. And just that comparison trap, that FOMO. I can't be the only one that's felt that. Please tell me I'm not. In a world of online communities, online friendships and parasocial relationships, and even just the toxic belief that whatever relationships we have, you know, with our family, with our friends or our, our romantic relationships, we can fall into this trap of believing that that is not good enough and it's it's not as great as it could be. Especially when, again, this is a totally made up example, but you know, you see Sally who lives on the other side of the world and her relationship seems absolutely perfect. Why? Because her partner sends her the sweetest good morning messages on the daily that you've ever seen. How do you know that? Why do you know that? Well, because she posts them every day. And you may start to wonder, oh my gosh, my husband, partner, fiance, whatever, has never done that for me, or only gives me a foot rub when I ask, or, you know, doesn't buy me Cartier love bracelets or Birkins or, you know, what have you. And that can start to slowly eat away at you. And I think that can actually erode your relationship from the inside out, sometimes without you even knowing. I think so much of what we see on social media can leak into our psyche and what we let in defines our reality. These kind of negative comparisons or watching someone else's relationship to a certain degree and falling into that comparison trap can end up hurting your own and lessening the connection that you have with your significant other. Which actually leads me to today's video sponsor, The Paired App. Paired is a relationship app that specializes in daily questions, fun games, exercises, quizzes. The Paired app offers so many ways to further strengthen and develop trust, intimacy, and connection within your romantic relationship. It also just really offers fun ways to get to know somebody. And for me personally, I found it really helpful to have what sometimes feel like intimidating or like tricky conversations that I don't really know how to approach or how to navigate properly. Some of the topics that you may find hard to navigate might be things like personal finance or goals or future plans or, you know, your intimate lives, like your, you know, your intimate time. That Those can be sometimes conversations that you don't really know how to navigate. And the Paired app offers certain prompts and certain conversation starters that help to navigate that in an ever-growing busy world with a lot of people now having more conflicting schedules than ever before being able to connect in a way no matter where you are in the world i think is so beneficial paired app has so kindly offered my subscribers you guys the chance to try the paired app with a seven day free trial and 25 percent off the premium subscription you just have to check out the link below i think you'll genuinely love this like if you don't love it like i said you get seven days free trial i'm pretty confident that if you're in a relationship you will benefit from this app because I certainly have. What's your screen time like? Mine is disgustingly unhealthy. We spend so much time on our phones and if we're gonna be spending so much time on our phones, why not do something that's gonna strengthen our relationships? As much as I love a meme and a funny video, sending that to your partner, like that's great, don't be wrong, but it's not enough to actually maintain a healthy connection with your partner. I personally love the daily questions the most. And what I love is that you can't see what your partner has written until you decide to answer it and then it unlocks their answer. And this one here is which quality of the other person do you wish you had more of in yourself? 
and I said, his positive outlook on life, he always sees the bright side of life. And he said her ability to not let what other people say stop her from doing what she loves and how organized she is. I would never have these conversations. Like I, in our busy lives, like I am crazy organized and like very structured. And so to hear that being acknowledged, that makes me feel really good. Although I also offer a feature that's a timeline that you can share important, memorable or milestone moments from your relationship. So check that out if you're interested. Thank you so much to the Paired app for sponsoring today's video and let's get back into it. I've definitely seen a lot of videos like this coming out from women, but there's also men sharing videos like this. It's, it's this trend that I've seen on TikTok of people coming out, opening up about their loneliness. A lot of them are either crying or just visibly really upset about the fact that they don't have any friends or they don't have as many friends as they'd like or they're lonely or they don't have a relationship, they've been single for this long or they just don't have enough connection in their life. Today is Labor Day holiday. I spent the day alone at home. It is kind of become the norm for me these days to stay home alone. I want friends. You know, I want friends. I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I ain't finna act like I don't want no friends. I do want friends. And over the last couple of years, I've came to accept this. I'm, I thought to myself, hey, you know, like when you get to this age, you just don't have friends anymore. I just, I need to, I just want to, I just feel so lonely. I'm just so lonely all the time. And these videos get so much engagement. They get hundreds of thousands of views. They get thousands of comments. They may receive a lot of online interaction and a lot of like almost an online community in a sense, but a lot of these people claim that they don't have any real friendships and that's a problem. A lot of the YouTube videos I've seen about this as well, there's been a number of videos coming out and a lot of them are kind of titled or they follow this idea that I have no friends, but it's okay. Or I have no friends and this is why it's okay. And I mean, as someone who's literally felt like they have no friends before, maybe this is a hot take and unpopular opinion, let me know, but I actually don't think it's okay and like, I don't know if you can follow this, but I don't think it's okay. And I think it's okay that it's not okay, if that makes sense. <laughs> I think the best thing about knowing this is that it doesn't have to be a reality forever. There are things that you can do to change it. And my fear and my worry for these people that claim I have no friends, but it's okay, it almost makes it sound like it's okay so that they don't wanna change it. I do think that we should strive for deeper connections and, and friendships and, and stronger relationships. I, I do genuinely believe that we should strive for that because, I mean, I don't know if you know this, if you've been here before, I'm a little bit of a health nut, okay? I'm a health nut and I don't mean to scare you, but there are some statistics surrounding loneliness and our health that I do think we should acknowledge. Loneliness can be as damaging to our health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. Being isolated increases your risk for cardiovascular disease by up to 32%. It can actually shorten your lifespan. And I think these are really important things to know. Like when I read those statistics, I was, I was really scared. But at the same time, I was, I was very motivated to form deeper connections and form deeper friendships, form deeper relationships with my, my family, my sister, my dog, my partner, my friends. It motivated me and it still motivates me to want to form deeper connections. It's a strange paradox because we live in a world now where we are hyper-connected. In the virtual world, we're hyper-connected. We have these different pockets and these different universes in this one world, thanks to social media, thanks to technology, thanks to video games. But at the same time, we're more socially isolated than ever before. As you may know, one of my favorite topics is talking about the rise of influencer culture and, and parasocial relationships. And I think it's, it's kind of interesting that we now live in a world where we advocate, we talk about more openly mental health than ever before. Mental health is at the forefront, but equally we're more socially isolated. I think it's a lot to do with how much we now rely on technology and social media just for daily activities, daily life. A lot of us use social media, use technology daily. You know, when we think about now the, the, the state of our grocery stores. I don't know if yours are any different, but I can literally scan my own groceries and I don't even have to talk to a checkout assistant. I can literally go through the entire grocery store and grab my food without even having to speak to anyone. I mean, I personally don't like to do that because I hate those little machines and then when they don't work, I need help anyway and then I can't find anyone. So I actually like to go through the, the person, <laughs> like the person to scan my groceries. But you know, we live in an incredibly lonely world and it's very isolating when you can do a lot of our daily activities without actually interacting with anybody. And this seems to be the direction that we're heading in faster and faster. And, and don't get me wrong, I think there is so much good about, for instance, working remotely. Working remotely has changed the way that we live. And for a lot of mums and a lot of women, it's been amazing. 
but it also has its downsides. Much like online dating, I mean, it has its pros and it is the future and it is, it's how we're living. You know, it's how a lot of people meet their partner. But there's also statistics that show that people swipe anywhere from 50 to 100 people a day, but feel less satisfied and more depressed than ever before. And with the rise of AI girlfriends, I mean, don't get me started. I did a whole video on AI girlfriends. I paid for an AI girlfriend myself. I'll have that video linked. It was scary, but this is the direction we're heading in. I think at the end of the day, these types of interactions do not come close to in-person deep connection that we can experience. And I think that we have this, we have this device, we have these social media communities, we have this ability to connect and we have the ability to use this device and to use our communities to connect deeper with, with each other and to actually potentially connect in real life. Like, I mean, if you want to drop right now in the comments down below what city you live in, you might find someone who lives in the same city as you and you could maybe meet up. I mean, I have these fantasies sometimes that I want to go and travel, partly because I don't travel much and I don't really have anyone to travel with that often. I would love to travel and meet up with some of you and meet you and, and hang out and catch up and potentially develop these in-person connections and these in-person relationships. I think that would be amazing. But yeah, if you want to drop where you're from in the comments down below, maybe you can meet some people. Maybe you can potentially make some more friends or people who are going through similar things as you and, and experiencing life similar to you. Some of the most recent examples, and I think some common examples of the parasocial relationship that I've witnessed recently with influencers are things like, you know, in these, in these really long hour long, you know, two hour long vlogs where they, they bring you along on their life. It can feel very intimate. And sometimes they'll say things like they're in their wardrobe and you feel like you're in your, th their wardrobe with a friend. And they'll say things like, Oh, should I wear this dress or this dress? I don't know. And it feels like they're asking you for your opinion. And, and in a way they are, but in the same vlog, they'll then go to that event in one of the dresses. So really they didn't actually need your advice because they already had been to the event. And I actually, I don't think they do it in a malicious way. I mean, sometimes I wonder if some of these influencers know the power they have and they know the, the power of their parasocial relationship and they almost manipulate it and milk it in a certain way. Unfortunately, I, I don't doubt that that's the case for some people, but I also have to believe, and I, I do believe that some influencers genuinely fall prey and experience parasocial relationships just like a viewer does, because I know I do. Look at me freaking getting teary, getting teary about a comment. <laughs> Technically, it's a great way to boost engagement, but really the influencers already gone to the event and they wore what they wanted to wear. Another example that's really made me more aware of my language and, and how I speak. I see it all the time, you know, I don't know if you do as well, but you'll, see, you'll hear an influence and be like, oh, you know, I'm gonna take you along, like we're gonna go to Paris with you or like, let's go to Bora Bora, or, like I'm taking you here. Come with me to the Sol de Janeiro event. Come with me to Paris for a girl's trip. Travel with us to Bora Bora. It's like, well, technically you're going there and I'm sitting on my couch with no pants on, eating chips, watching you live your best life. Like I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> oh my God, I need help. And again, I, I don't, I like to believe they don't mean it in a malicious way because maybe to them, they genuinely feel like they're bringing you along, but girl, you sitting at home. Okay. I, this happens to me all the time. They say that I'm there, but I don't feel like I'm there. <laughs> This used to happen to me all the time and it, it very easily can happen again if, I, if I'm not careful, but it's this whole idea of living vicariously through someone. I'm gonna share this one particular comment that I, come, that I came across. I'm not gonna share the influencer. I'm not gonna share the video. I'm not even gonna share the user's name because I don't want it to seem like I'm you know bashing them because I'm not. But they left a comment on this one particular influencer's video talking, she, she basically asked her audience if, if she should still continue doing her unboxings because she does do these very lavish unboxings. She spends thousands of dollars. She gets thousands of dollars of worth of products gifted to her from brands or from her partner. And so she just does a lot of unboxings. And this one particular user said, gosh, please continue your unboxings. I love that you are being thoughtful about your audience and the current climate, but hope you also understand that we all live vicariously through you. I know I'm one of your many, many subscribers, but know that you inspire me each time you do an unboxing of a beautiful piece to the point that I am daring to dream to get an Hermes bag one day because I think it's possible. Your content made me believe in myself, so please don't stop. Love you lots. I, I go back and forth with this and I'd love to hear your thoughts. I, I think there's, in a sense, nothing wrong with living vicariously through someone in certain doses, that's up to the individual, I think, depending on what's enough for each person. But just for myself personally, I don't think that my brain can hold space for both, if that makes sense. Like I can't 
regularly, so when I say regularly, let's say the influencer maybe posts one or two or three videos a week. I can't live vicariously through someone who doesn't know me, a parasocial relationship, to that degree and that that regularly, live vicariously through them whilst also being content and happy with my life. I don't think there's space in this little old noggin for those two things to be true at once. But again, that's just me. Let me know how you feel about that in the comments down below. And I do think it's also worth acknowledging though, don't get, it, don't get me wrong, I do think that to some degree, parasocial relationships can be helpful. Like we talked about in the beginning, you know, if you're going through something or you're experiencing something in life, knowing that someone else is on that path as well, or experiencing that or feeling that, it's a nice feeling to know you're not alone in that sense and it, it can feel good. But I think at the same time, it can, like everything, verge into an unhealthy territory when indulged in too much. If you're prioritizing your parasocial relationships, relationships with people that don't even know you exist more than you are your in-person relationships, that's when it can be a problem. I'm speaking from personal experience. <laughs> I indulge in parasocial relationships just as much as the next millennial, you know? The reason I started my whole channel was because I felt like I didn't have anyone to talk about the things that I loved and the things that I was enjoying. And I just wanted to find somebody to talk to about these things. It's literally why I started like 10 years ago, over 10 years ago probably. I don't know if you've seen this trend online, let me know. I came across it on TikTok a few months ago and I'm just like, every time I see it, I'm like, ugh. It's like this whole idea of going ghost mode. I don't know, maybe that, that terminology works on the youth, I don't know. I think though young people, I mean, not just young, I think we live in a world now where we're almost more guided to prioritize individual desires. We're almost taught to believe that we can achieve things all on our own and, and that individual desires, individual needs are the most important thing, but also a lot of thing, a lot of things can be done all on our own. And I don't know if I believe that, you know, there's this trend that's, I don't know if you've seen it, it's kind of like, oh, hustle culture and sometimes it's used in the fitness space as well but it's like it's either they're either verbally saying it or it's this text overlay some examples i've seen are people who want to hit certain health fitness goals and it's like go ghost mode just don't talk to anyone don't don't go out don't socialize and just go to the gym do this and eat good and you won't even recognize yourself in three months what if you were to just go ghost mode and fully dedicate yourself to your vision no distractions no social media no meeting up for coffees just silence your phone and i'm like oh my god that sounds like truly depression in a nutshell like cutting off everybody really like going ghost mode i need social interaction and i'm an introvert you know, there's also this idea, I've seen it as well in hustle culture, it's like work on your business, grind, you know, spend every night, every day working on your business, don't go out, don't see your friends, don't socialize, don't catch up with anyone, don't go out, no coffees with friends. And I'm like, really? Like, I love coffees. <laughs> I love coffees and friends. <laughs> like, I don't like this kind of all or nothing. I, I genuinely like to believe in balance. And I think that you can achieve your business goals. You can achieve your fitness goals. You can achieve any goal. You don't have to cut off people and stop socializing in order to do that. I personally don't think. I don't think that's healthy. I don't think it's gonna make you very happy either. Let me know what you think about that. Some things to look out for that I've had to look out for in the past, I mean, even still have to continue to look out for is, if you feel like you know more about your favorite influences than you do the friends in your real life, you may need to, you may need to just like reevaluate that. I, I learned that the hard way. I mean, I, I've said this before and I'll say it again. I think it also, it's very true in, when it comes to dating coaches. You know, some dating coaches, if you're single, don't be wrong. Some of them have great advice. But at the same time, if you are literally prioritizing that parasocial relationship, you're watching all their content, you're liking all their, you're engaging with all their posts, watching all their YouTube videos. Maybe you've signed up for one of their courses and you spend a couple of hours a week doing that. That may help you, but if you're prioritizing that parasocial relationship and maybe some of the knowledge that you'll gain is great, but if you're not, you know, swiping, if you're not out there going on dates, meeting guys or, you know, commenting or liking that guy that you think's cute's Instagram post or photo, again, you might want to rethink your priorities because as great as dating coaches can be and that kind of education can be, what's really going to help you is going out and making in-person connections and meeting people. Some things I think to keep in mind regarding in-person connections that I think are easy to forget is watching your friends' stories or you know engaging with your friends' posts on social media is not enough. And I think unfortunately we live in a world now where we feel like we feel like we know what's going in, going on in our friends' lives because of what they post. But there has been so many times. Let me know in the comments down below if you can relate. 
There's been so many times where I have posted a funny photo or a funny meme, but I'm friggin' miserable. I'm so miserable. And I think sometimes that's a trap we can fall into that almost divides us more. It almost erodes the connection we have with our loved ones in, in real life. If we don't check in on them, you know, we see them, we see them on social media. Oh yeah, they post that funny video. <laughs> they're doing good. No, they're not. How do you know? How do you know they're doing good? Have you asked them? I think that's something I'm trying to do more of. I think it's really easy to fall into that, especially with our busy lives. But you know, just because someone posts something on social media, a funny video or a meme or a photo of them smiling, doesn't mean they're doing good. I'm talking from personal experience. Let me know if you if you can relate. One TikTok I saw a woman who was single, she she was quite visibly upset and she was talking about how she wished that her her friends in relationships would check in on her. Well, I'm sitting at home, staring at the ceiling, just wishing that I had someone to talk to, is knowing that none of you idiots realize how lucky you are. One thing I wanna add on to that is, I think regardless of whether you're in a relationship or you're single, I think it shouldn't be like a tit for tat, you should do this because you're in a relationship. I kind of disagree with that. I think you can be in a relationship and still be feeling lonely. You can have a family, you can still be having a hard time, just as you can when you're single. A friend of mine a few years ago kind of helped me have that light bulb moment because you know, I was going through a bit of a hard time and I was feeling really lonely. And I said to her, I said, I wish that I had what you had in the sense of, you know, you live with your family, you live in a house with all these people. I was living alone at the time. And you know, she's, she's a beautiful person. She has so many friends. She's a social butterfly, everyone loves her, understandably so. I am not that way. <laughs> and I said, I wish I, I wish I had that. I wish I lived with people like you do. And, and maybe if I did, I wouldn't feel so lonely. And she said to me, Kaylin, some of my loneliest moments have been when I'm at home with my family or you know, when I'm out with 10, 20 people or something. And that made me realize just because you're in a relationship or just because you live at home with all these people or just because you're surrounded by people, you can still experience loneliness. So I think that's really worth acknowledging as well. Following on from the Paired app, I do think finding ways to strengthen your in-person connections is so important, whether it's using apps like Paired or finding ways to connect with people. Like I said, you know, we have, we have these communities online. We have the ability to connect with more people in real life using our phones, using technology. I saw this one TikTok a while ago from this girl who lives in my city and she was basically advertising that she wanted to start doing like hot girl walks. And basically she had the date set and she's like, you know, if you're interested in this, meet me here at this time. And then the following week she posted, there was like 20 people that showed up for this walk. And I thought that was amazing. And I'm thinking about going to one next time, but it made me realize that there is a way to utilize our technology to actually further strengthen and, and make in-person connections. I mean, this girl on TikTok did it. She did a little hot girl walks and look at her. I mean, I before have found myself complaining that, oh, I don't have any friends that wanna go for walks with me. That girl literally probably had the same problem and she was like, I'm just gonna post a video and like invite anybody that's free this day to come with me. And look at, look at the people, she had like 20 people come for a walk with her. That is the power of technology. That's the power of social media, if used in that way. Another thing that I think is, again, it's hard to do because we're all so busy and we're just trying to survive, but hobbies, hobbies that, that allow us to connect with other people. I personally, like I said, I'm an introvert. A lot of my hobbies are more solo or like smaller group activities, but I do think it's important to engage in things that give us purpose, meaning, and, and surround us with people and, and provide us with connection. A lot of us are very overstimulated and under-socialized. I don't know if you're a millennial, let me know, but we're kind of the last generation to remember what life was like without social media. And much like we have to teach, not all of us, but you know, some of us have to teach the older generations on how to use technology. I kind of wonder if the future, we're gonna see a world in which we have to teach Gen Z and Gen Alpha how to use basic social skills. It used to be seen as elderly people were the most lonely, but stats now show that Gen Z is one of the loneliest groups and millennials aren't far off of it, probably because of social media, but thanks to social media we, and, and technology, we also have a way to deepen and strengthen our in-person connection. Human interaction, I think, is what makes us human. It's also what makes us healthy, going back to the stats I shared. Especially if you're 30, like I am, it's not easy. It's not easy to make new friends. It's not easy to make certain connections. It can feel a lot harder, but I think it's it's definitely worthwhile. And I guess to wrap this video up, I think it's also at the same time worth acknowledging 
if you feel alone right now, like, I mean, whether you have one friend or three friends or five friends or 10 friends, or, you know, whether you have a partner, a relationship, whether you have a, a family, a parent, parents, a sister, a brother, a sibling, a cousin, a fur baby, <laughs> a pet, I think recognizing that connection and, and appreciating that and being grateful for that and recognizing that some of the connections that you may have in your life, other people would, would dream of having. I hope you enjoyed today's video and again if you're interested if you're in a relationship and you want to try out the paired app I personally love it. I'll have my link down there for seven days free trial and 25% off the premium subscription. Again thank you so much for joining me in today's video. I'm very excited and also very nervous to hear what you have to say about today's video because I basically just you know out of myself as a bit of a loner. But yeah, thanks for joining me. I'm, I'm looking forward to hearing from you in the comments down below. I'm going to have another few links for you there if you want to check those out. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you in my next one.